tosses. You don't throw it out. Solid. Oh, my. I stick and move through the madness, bobbing weed the negative, blocking out the haters. My meditation is medicine. YouTube, what is good, boxing fans and gamers? It's your boy Fight Night's Finest, the Sofa Commentator, back with another Fight Night Champion online ranked match. In this match, we got a Vander, the Warrior, Holyfield going up against Iron Mike Tyson. And these are one of those matches where you usually start stomping your feet and start whining like, oh my god, he's going to be sidestep up, okay, he's going to be backstep straight, he's going to be one, two, spam into the body, he's going to be throwing power up because of the body, and then you breathe in a nice sigh of relief, and you lean your head all the way back and taking that deep breath, and you're like, ah, oh, thank god he's not a damn spammer. <laughs> Cause you know most of the time when you get on this game you run into the scumbags of the community especially when you go into a mike tyson matchup is either you just want to back out or you just prepare to deal with it prepare to fight a game plan that you know may not be exactly what you want to do but you know that's why we have this game plan that we use in every fight and i'll link that in as a video response or put it in a link in the description as to the game plan that I use or a game plan that you guys might be able to use you might have your own game plan that you use but for the first round I always try to sit back and observe my opponent watch what it is that he's doing what's effective what's not effective you know give him something a little basic give him something that he usually sees before something that's not too complicated nothing that's gonna give away my entire arsenal and then we use round two as a plan of attack the first minute of round three try some things uh, round two try some things out and then you know make some adjustments for round number two and then carry them out throughout round three and blah 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 like i said videos as video response and link will be in the description to that video just in case if you guys are having some trouble on how to start out each fight so like i said we approach each fight the way that we normally do and then there's one other thing that we have to do before we're able to win a matchup and as to know what is going on in this guy's head and two his character what weaknesses does he have so we need to take all those things into account as well as our own weaknesses first of all let's take a look at mike tyson's strengths we know that he is an extremely hard power puncher the guy has amazing power he can knock you out in a blink of an eye without one punch knockout power and he's also pretty darn fast now with that being taken into consideration, you have to be sharp on defense. Even though Vander Holyfield will allow you to make mistakes because of how tough he is and how much of a chin he has on him, you're able to make some mistakes. You are able, you know, you give him some breathing room, you know, you, you give a little pathway for error. So that's always nice to have with a fighter like a Vander Holyfield. Pretty good counter pick to Mike Tyson. Now we gotta take a week uh, look at the two weaknesses that Mike Tyson does carry. As much of a beast that he is and how overplayed that he is online, he does have two weaknesses. One, if you play with him properly or you're just a power punch in general, you have you're gonna have a tough time controlling stamina. Tyson is one of those fighters that can be gassed by round three and pretty much out of stamina and no chance to compete in a fight by round number five. And then you have those short 71 inch arms which, you know, even though they travel a lot farther than what they seem, it's still considered a disadvantage. And me having a Vander Holyfield with a 77 inch reach, I have a six punch advantage or a six point advantage to work with. So now let's head into the game plan and our plan of attack. First of all, with anything, like I said, after you make your observations, it's time to go in there and be a volume puncher because that's what a Vander Holyfield does. Before we head into the game plan, we should probably take a look of our own strengths and weaknesses. Weakness number one, Holyfield does not have one punch knockout power. So you're gonna be in there for a while. You have to throw combinations if you're gonna plan on using a band Holyfield. Two, he has the same exact stamina problems that Mike Tyson has. So you have to be very careful with how you use your stamina. You see it's round two and you already see how far down my stamina is. And number three, he doesn't really take body shots that well. Now there are the moments where he can exchange, but you know, if he gets to jump on you first or he's able to land some nice shots to the body, you're going to see it a few times in this matchup. You need to duck out, you need to back away, you need to get on the outside and then try to regroup and start working that jab. So, as all things with our offense, it all starts with the jab. The jab is going to let us know if we're in range, if we're out of range, if we're too close. What combination we can get off and what angle will you be right at. Now, with that being said, you see me here jabbing and you might see me through throw one punch. Then you might see me go up to another single punch and then one, two, pop 
possibly two punches, land two more punches if that works. Let's go ahead and turn it up to a three punch combination. And if that works, go ahead and toss in one quick four punch combination and it will move on. Think about it like this. When you use a fighter like a Vander Holyfield or any violent puncher, from Timothy Bradley to anybody else who is a violent puncher in this game, you have to keep this into consideration. I need to throw tons of punches and I need to be accurate with the punches that I land. Now, you see us attacking the body with that jab downstairs because that jab, like I said, will set up the angles that you need to have to know what to throw your other punches at. So if you see me land a single jab downstairs to the body before I go back to playing defense, you're going to see me turning up to one, two punches. So you saw there a jab to the body, right hook combination. It didn't land. So we go back to playing defense. Let's, make, let's let him work for us, you know. What he's doing is we need to build up a pattern of our own. We need to take into account what he's doing and then build a rhythm. Before we start throwing three punches, we need to land one. And if one lands, we throw two. And if two lands, then we throw three. Think of it as just building up a pattern as if you was an NFL rookie quarterback. Your offensive coordinator isn't just going to have you come out there slinging flies and, and um, fade routes down the field or 15, 20 yard post routes. He's just not going to do that to you. So your offensive coordinator has things that's going to help you out. And you need to think about your defense as a helper as well as your combinations as helpers. Single punch combinations don't allow you too much error on defense. Sometimes they're easy to counter, but if you're unpredictable with it, it's hard to know when a punch is going to come. So, like we said in football, they'll give you little flat routes that you can run or dump off to the running back, hand the passes on um, hand. You know, you got the running game to help you out. You got little short slants, little drag routes underneath, quick um, throws to the tight end and the flats, maybe a little dump off to the fullback. And you got to do a few things before you can just go in there and start throwing a whole bunch of punches. And I'm sorry, son, before we continue on, somebody please teach this man some defense. We end up cold clocking him to the canvas with the right hook for the first time. And down goes Iron Mike onto the canvas. So, like I said, you need to continue on thinking with that kind of pattern. So with a value puncher, you got to think about, you know, building a pattern, building some confidence to throw the high volume punches or combinations. Now, I don't like to go past four at most. And when I do throw that four punch combination, I need to think of myself as a sprinter. When you're out there running or you go up a hill and you sprint as fast as you can or if you've ever been jogging, you know you start out at a steady pace. But if you're training in order to get faster or to have more stamina, there has to be a time where you increase that punch output in this case. In this case, you will be sprinting if you were a runner. So in order to keep yourself in proper shape, you got to give yourself a cool down time. How many times have you been out there jogging and then all of a sudden, okay, I'm moving too fast or I've been doing this for a long time. Let me take a quick walk. Let me cool myself down. That's what you do when you go to play defense. You start cooling yourself down. You stay on the outside, bounce from left to right, step in and step out, do a little bit, a little bit of baiting and let his own mistakes work for, for you. Let his lack of discipline work towards you. Because remember, it's not just based on offense. It's also based on how you are able to um, play defense. So there's more than just one form of being able to win fights. You can play defensively like we're doing here right now. You can play offensively like we was doing a few moments ago. And then, of course, you can use the ring to your advantage. Those are the three forms of scoring in boxing, and you need to take all of those into account. Like I said, if you throw too many punches out there at a time, your stamina is going to drop really fast. And once again, somebody please teach this man some defense. We are able to drop him onto the canvas for the second and final time. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please hit that like button. Comment in the comment section below. And follow me on Twitter if you're not able to see my videos or YouTube is just boogery for you. Just know you can never miss one of my videos if you follow me on Twitter. Anyway, thank you guys for watching once again. This is your boy Fighting Next Funnest, the Sofa Commentator. And I'm off this. Peace. I'm the chronicle of our struggles, the voice of the families like Moses only keeping it real.